Welcome back, welcome back to another episode of Dragons in America. Are you the dragons, the dracons found in the Americas? Let me know what you think. Again, you know, shout out to Fabes VG for the beat. They just been killing it with the beats. Giving us that energy, you know. Keep our fire burning, right? But again, you know, we're just talking America. Or are we talking about Mexico? Or is this all about Katai? Maybe it's just about Tangu. Or maybe it's just about you, you know? <laughs> you know, we're just surfing the wave, man. So again, you know, all praises to the Most High. May we see clearly there's a lot to address and a lot to connect. So if you ever get lost to the point I'm trying to make, just remember this. It is the glory of Hawa to conceal a matter, but the glory of Khans is to search out a matter. You know, just a little Proverbs 25-2 drop, you know. I'm just talking lost tribes. I'm just talking vibes, right? <laughs> Because again, this is just a wave, man. We just riding the wave, man. But, you know, the Most High is allowing us to see clearly. So if I'm talking lost tribes and promised lands, I'm talking the seed of Abraham. You know, all also, you know, you know, much Ahab to the nation, right? You got <laughs> Israel, or, you know, the seed of Abraham popping off all over this internet situation. I'm just happy to be a part of it. I'm just adding volumes to the collection, you know, shedding more light on this investigation. Are you the Dracons, the dragons, found in the Americas? You know, no longer complacent. No, we can't be complacent. We're allowed to see the dragons, you know, many faces. Because <laughs> we're just talking the emperor's face and the emperor's pace. But remember, you know, we walk a fine line, you know, because definition is spiritual idolatry. Definition is spiritual idolatry. <laughs> only by the dim spark of the hidden light, only by the dim spark of the hidden light are we allowed to see, you know? This is episode five, right? Allah, wow, let's go. You know, I didn't think we'd get to five, right? But, you know, I felt like five was, you know, you know, it's an important number, right? Just talking five. We're at episode five, Dragons in America. So if you were on the last video, you know, we were just climbing the mountain, you know, getting back to our roots. You know, we're talking Moshe, right? Or maybe I'm just talking Mexico. But again, you know. We got to keep our fire burning, right? I never said it would be easy, but I believe it'll be worth it. So remember, you know, we're just ascending, evolving and ascending, we're just climbing the mountain. So, you know, I like to start it off with, you know, the chill vibes, you know, we're just taking it one step at a time. Get the Zen sounds, uh, you know, we gotta get the flute flowing, you know, with a little bit of tribal drum in the background, of course. 
So again, we're just talking dr- dragons, right? Or dracons in America. But before we get into it, you know, I got to do the fair use situation, of course. Section 107 of the Copyright Act provides the statutory framework for determining whether something is a fair use and identifies certain types of uses, such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Again, this is just research, right? We're just following the drinking board. Let's go. Episode 5, man, we're here. We deserve to be here. And all praises to the Most High, allowing us to see clearly... Just the dim spark of the hidden light, right? Are you, are we, the Dracons, the dragons found in the Americas? Let's go. We're going to connect all the dots from episode one through episode four. So, again, may we see clearly. And, you know, may Hawa, you know, show me the way. Guide me, guide my words, my voice, you know, because again, I'm just a, I'm just a guide, I'm, I'm a pilot, you know, I don't have it all figured out, so again, it is the glory of Hawa to conceal a matter, but the glory of Khans is to search out a matter, right, so keep that in your mind as we move through this information, and as we keep, you know, we keep riding the wave, right? keep our fire burning though. at the same time we're just talking americans right aboriginal copper colored races found here i'm talking american or are we talking amar you khan amaru khan right copper colored races found here so if we're talking copper colored we're not just talking we're not talking light skin we're not talking brown skin we're not talking dark skin we're talking copper colored races you know we have a we may have a light skin brother a light skin sister you might have a another brother or sister or cousin who's more of a darker complexion but just all family right again we're just following the drinking gourd and we're just riding the wave man we're just talking copper colored races found here so keep that in your mind con just talking copper colored races found here, right? You know, tell me what you think, man. Are you the dragons found in the Americas? Leave a note in the comments, man. Let's go. It's episode five. The great names of the past crowded around the discovery of America. As ancient writings newly printed were searched for evidence. You know, we're just searching, right? Because it's the glory of Hawaii to hide a matter or to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of cons to search out a matter. Let's go. Columbus studied Ptolemy, Ptolemy, Aristotle, and Pliny. He had a copy of Pope Aenus Silvius's Historia Rerum Ubique Gestarum. If I said that correctly, the Pope had modestly planned a universal history and geography. The Pope had modestly planned a universal history and geography. So we're talking about the Pope and this Columbus, man. This the Columbus, man. man did, did he find dragons over here in America or did he find you, man? You tell me. So the Pope had modestly planned a universal history and geography and had completed the section on Asia, right? Are we talking Karkata? Are we talking America? Are we talking Mexico? Let's go. He read Esdras, the prophet of the Apocrypha. So we're talking apocrypha. That means the, if I can put it in terms, the text not so much accepted by the uh, by the church, right? And was inclined to believe him because Saint Ambrose and Saint Augustine had thought highly of him. Also, Esdras told Columbus what he wanted to hear. His estimate of the Earth's relative proportion of land and water made it seem that the Atlantic would be conveniently narrow. Even Prince Henry the Navigator and his research institute at Sagres found some of his inspiration and motivation in legend, right? Are we just talking medieval romances, right? The route around Africa was to lead not only to the prosperity of Oriental trade. So 
if you were on the last you know couple videos we're talking about the she she and the tangu who had control over the silk road you know but now they're making the connection you know about this oriental trade and the you know these legends right are we just talking the legend of Prester John right but also King David into the gardens you know so what gardens are they talking about you know talking about the garden of Eden or are you talking about something else man we're just talking the legend of Prester John let's get it episode five dragons in America so again you know like I like to say you know we're just following the drinking gourd man you know I, I can't make this up I'm just connecting the dots right just connecting the dots so you find the big dipper you find the little dipper you find the north star polaris but again no one's talking about the constellation draco coil between the two the dragon i'm just talking rastaban right or draco and ursa minor right so this gives you you know just an image something you can visualize right just following the drinking gourd. Keep that in your mind. So we know the Cherokees from the past video say that this terrestrial image of the constellation Draco, the mysterious serpent mound found in Southwest Ohio, was the terrestrial image of the constellation Draco. We're just talking as above, so below. Let's go. The great serpent mound is a 1,348 foot long, three foot high prehistoric prehistoric effigy mound found in Adams County, Ohio. We're just talking Adams County, right? We're talking Adam, or are we just talking about, uh, you know, medieval romances, man, and antediluvian romances, maybe. We're just talking Adam, Adams County, Ohio, and this mysterious serpent mound built by the ancestors of the American Indian tribes. You know, we're just talking tribes, or maybe we're just talking lost tribes. So, you know, you know, in the last videos, we, you know, some of the earlier ones, we talked about these Shikamaguas, right? You know, Shikamaguas, right? A group that separated from the greater body of the Cherokee during the American Revolutionary War. So we're talking around 1775. You got these Shikamagua Cherokees separating from the greater body of the Cherokees, right? But why, we ask? So what happened was that there was a split between the accommodationist faction of Cherokees, those who thought that the best way to relate to white expansionism, American expansionism, was to accommodate as best as they could for them to be accepted. So basically, Chicamaguas wasn't with this accommodationist uh, thought process of the greater Cherokee nation. <laughs> so the Chicamaguas separated and you know they resisted American colonists during this American Revolutionary War. We're just talking 1775, right? The year before the Declaration of Independence. So, you know, these accommodationists thought that the colonists who later, you know, became the Americans, right? The, claiming your, you know, your title of Amaru Khan, right? Would then basically see them as equals and give them or allow them to stay on their land or at least a smaller piece of land. We're just talking accommodationist faction of the Cherokees, but we're not talking about the dragons, the Shikamagos, right? The fierce, violent, fiery, staunch, and unrelenting enemy of American settlers, the Shikamagos, right? So keep that in your mind. Shikamagwa is the Cherokee, but the Shikamagwa was the uh, non accommodationist faction of the Cherokee. Again, we're just talking 1776, American Revolutionary Wars, or am I just talking Shikamagua Wars, the, the Second Cherokee War, or Shikamagua, 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 Shikamagua Wars. Come on, man. Just talking Shikamaguas, you know, 1775. You know, separated from the greater body of the Cherokee. They didn't want to be accommodationist. And again, this is the main question I ask. You know, we all have a grandma or a grandpa or someone in our family who, you know, they tell us that you're Cherokee or you're Blackfoot or you're, you know, 
whatever tribe that you know you may claim right but we got to ask where was these other tribe where are these tribes at when these shikamagas are popping off from the american settlers for the last 20 years since the declaration of independence when'd you have time to be a slave man tell me con so we're talking to kumse talking shikamaga wars man if you were on you know, previous videos, you know that Tecumse was the uh, pretty much the apprentice to the Shikamagwa leader, Dragon Canoe. And Tecumse's mission in life was to you know, get everybody to try, but, man, but we know the Shikamagwas are popping off nonetheless. So again, we got Tecumse, whose name means shooting star, blazing comet, born in this Western Ohio Valley under the constellation Draco in the same area of this, you know, so-called mysterious serpent map. So remember dragon, dracon, dragon means a fiery shooting meteor or imaginary serpent. Or are we just talking medieval romances? Man? Blazing comet, shooting meteor, shooting star, Takumse, Shikamagwas, right? So I thought this was interesting. So the definition of comet, we were just talking dragons, right? Shooting meteors, blazing comets, or am I talking to Kumse? A heavenly body, heavenly. So don't forget that, right? Which in comparison to others is of a huge mass, though sparse, nebulous, and transparent. Sometimes it may be seen to have a nucleus, while the surrounding area forms something like a tail, beard, or tangled locks. Again, you know, for you know some more perspective uh, you know identify if I have to by this so-called black so-called Negro so nonetheless I see beard tangled locks you know I'm asking questions man I don't know about you I don't know about you I'm just talking blazing comments you know, medieval romances and Tecumse right or am I just talking about the definition of a comment so the word here for feathers is Ebra. So like we're about to connect all the dots, right? We're just talking land of the feathered serpent, right? We're talking Quetzalcoatl. Or maybe we're talking about Mexico. Man. Or maybe we're talking about Moshe. Man. Who knows, man? Or maybe it's just Prester John and Chinggis Khan. But also King David, man. Let's go. Ebra which is often associated with the feathers of a dove or ostrich or eagle, you know, an eagle, right? We're just talking feathers, right? So Heber, you know, meaning partner togetherness, according to this definition, an ancestor of Abraham, right? An ancestor of Abraham, right? Are we just talking lost tribes and promised lands or the seed of Abraham? So Psalm 91.4, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. And his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So again, he shall cover thee with his feathers. Are we talking, you know, dragons? Are we talking birds? Are we talking about Hawa? Or are we just talking the seed of Abraham? Because remember, the Most High Hawa revealed himself to Abraham. Abraham believed on him, believed on Hawa. And Hawa made a covenant with the seed of Abraham, right? Just talking lost tribes and promised lands, but the seed of Abraham. So again, Eber, 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 are we talking Eber, Heber, or Ebra, right? I mean, you tell me. Meaning the other side in the form Hebrew. Right? I'm just talking about Prester John, but also King David, the seed of Abraham. Again, we're talking land of the feathers, serpent, Middle America. Again, are we talking Mexico? Are we talking Southwest Valley, Southwest Ohio Valley, uh, the Midwest? All right. Again, we're just talking land of the feathers, serpent. We're talking. Heber, Ebra, and Eber, right? Or are we talking Hebrews, right? Lost tribes 
and promised lands, beard and tangled locks, the seed of Abraham, right? Blazing Comet, Shooting Star, we're talking Tecumseh, we're talking Shikamaguas, but we're also talking about Abraham, Eber and Hebra, right? Or are we just talking Land of the Feathered Serpent? Let's go. I'm just trying to connect the dots. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this video. If you can't tell, I'm just, I'm ready to go, man. I'm, I'm ready to put it all together for you. So, Land of the Feathered Serpent. It is still called Quetzalcoatl among the Aztecs or Kukulkan among the Yucatec Maya and Kukumats and Tohil among the Kiish Maya. Again, we're talking mysterious Maya. They say disappeared or maybe they're hidden in plain sight. We're just talking Kukulkans or Amaru Khans, right? Or Quetzalcoatl, land of the feathered serpent. Let's go. Ancient Mexico. Mexico. Right? Or am I just talking she come up or she she maybe so cats a coat I mean cats a coat cats a coat let's bring it back I'm just talking beard and tangled locks I'm talking lost tribes and promised lands the seed of Abraham right we're just talking feathers right Eber right he shall cover thee with his feathers land of the feather serpent Kukukan, Quetzalcoatl, ancient Mexico, Quetzalcoatl, feathers, Eber, Ebra, right? <laughs> Quetzalcoatl was one of the more important Aztec deities associated with learning and knowledge. Learning and knowledge, I mean, does, who does this sound like? I mean, ah, oh, man, this is, this is big, man. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this. All praises to the Most High. We're talking learning and knowledge. Are we talking Mexico? Or are we talking Moshe, man? <laughs> We're just talking Middle America, Kuku Khan, right? So Quetzalcoatl personified as a snake bird. Does this look like a snake or a bird to you? This looks like, you know, the definition of dragon to me, right? <laughs> you know, a staunch and unrelenting enemy. We're talking Quetzalcoatl. We're talking learning and knowledge. Ebra. Come on. So Quetzalcoatl decided to leave his people driven out by other gods driven out by other gods remember we even talk about definition alone being spiritual idolatry and if it weren't for the dim spark of the hidden light we are allowed to see the dragon's faces and the dragon's paces man so Kesako leaves his people who are because he believes he's driven out by other you know, other gods so these other Aztecs or his tribe or whatever, they're not keep they're not code keeping, man. They're they're following other gods, man. Maybe this is just all, you know, made up and Quetzalcoatl is just a snake bird, you know, personification. So basically, you know, he was driven out by other gods. He burned his house and hid his treasure and headed east into the rising sun. Are we talking? Constellation Draco and Big Dipper, you know, following the drinking gourd, or this Quetzalcoatl associated with learning and knowledge decides it, man, it's time to go, man. I don't know what these what these guys are on, man, what these tribes are on, man. They're you know. So again, I don't have it all figured out. I'm just connecting the dots. But importantly, you know, we're talking Columbus in the beginning, right? So it says when the Spanish invaders appeared in the Aztec lands wearing glittering breastplates, they were hailed as the returning Quetzalcoatl. So I remember Quetzalcoatl left because his people were, you know, he was driven out by other gods. Not that he was claiming to be a god, but maybe he believed in a Hawa that the other tribes, men, tribes, women, or whatever was going on, you know, started to, you know, come up with definitions of Hawa. And Quetzalcoatl decided it was time to go. But when the Spanish came to Mexico, they thought it was Quetzalcoatl returning, right? And Emperor Montezuma welcomed them with gifts. Again, we're just talking Quetzalcoatl in the land of the feathered serpent, right? We're just talking Ebra, right? And Psalm 91.4, he shall cover thee with his feathers, right? My man's covered with feathers, man. Who is this Quetzalcoatl? 
only time will tell. So I always say this, but I figured I'd show you the clip, right? So the dragon represents the spirit of change, an important principle in the Taoist religion in both China, which we know as Kata, the black Kata, and Japan, the dragon symbolized royalty, royalty, right? We're just talking the seed of Abraham, Preston John, but also King David and appeared on the garments of the emperor in the Mikado. The very word dragon was used instead of emperor. So they're calling the emperor the dragon, right? We're just talking dragon's face and the dragon's pace, right? But we do know that when we talk about dragon, a fierce, fiery, violent person, either male or female, right? E, bro, right? Lost tribes and promised lands. Or am I talking about the sea? Abraham. Let's go. So mixed ka'o. We're talking cloud serpent. Again, we're talking cloud serpent. Mixed ka'o, who was a Mesoamerican god identified with hunting. Yada yada, we know that mixed ka'o. I don't think it's Ketsuko, but you know, they're calling this mixed ka'o the god, but we know that Ketsuko left because his people were driven out by other gods. So, we're just making the connections, man. What does this really mean? So this is derived from a deified hunter and warrior leader of the Toltec Shishimek peoples of Central Mexico. So Toltecs, Shishimeks, Shishimeks. And we, are we talking Shikamagua? Or are we just talking Shishimek in Mexico, right? In Quesaco, right? Who was a father of a constellation. You know, we're just talking Quesaco. He left, man. Kesako had to get up out of there, man. It just, it just wasn't making sense for Kesako. So the Shishimek, so we know Toltec, Shishimek, Shishimek, any of the Nahuatlan peoples in Mexico, a warlike people of northern Mexico, the Shishimek, Toltec, Shishimek, were also associated with this Kesako, right? I'm just talking dragon's face and dragon's pace, right? Episode 5, man. Dragons in America. Let me know what you think. We're just riding the wave. Right? We're just evolving and ascending. We're just climbing the mountain. So, it talks the Shishimeka War. We're just talking Shishimek, right? So, Shishimek, Shishimeka. Is it all the same? Was a military conflict waged between Spanish colonizers and their Indian allies. So, hold up. So the Shishimek are fighting the Spanish, but the Spanish colonizers have Indian allies who have a confederate, a confederation against the Shishimek. Are we, are we talking lost tribes and promised lands? Are we talking the seed of Abraham? Come on. So again, remember what we said. Let's get some orientation. Let's get some orientation. So Ketsuko, remember, decided to leave because either he or his ideology was driven out by other gods. You know, they wasn't keeping the code, man. And he headed east into the rising sun. That's when the Spanish show up, right? And they thought it was the return of, you know, Ketsuko was coming back, but Ketsuko didn't come back. You had Columbus and them, you know, coming across the water. Right? But they're somehow the Spanish have Indian allies against the confederation of the Shishimeka. Here's where it all comes together, right? So we talking to Kumse, remember the blazing comet, born in southwest Ohio Valley, under the constellation Draco, near this terrestrial serpent man. To Kumse's mission in life was to get Indian tribes to band together. Now it makes sense why he's getting them to band together because you got you got Columbus and the Spanish, uh, Estebanico and them linked up with Indian allies who have a confederation against the Shishimek. Come on, man. Come on, man. Are we just talking Shikamabu, right? Into Kumsa. You know, trying to get, a, get us to band together, man. What's going on, man? You got to ask what's going on. So the Spanish initially attempted to defeat the combined Shishimeka peoples. Remember we talked Toltec, Shishimeka, right? So 
the Spanish tried to defeat the Shishimak in a war of fire and blood. Are we talking dragons? Or are we just talking about copper colored races found here? So, you know, but the Spanish eventually sought peace as they were unable to defeat them. So the Spanish couldn't even defeat these Shishimak who were tribed up. Or, I can't even say that. So the Spanish were linked up, I guess, with the Indian allies who had a confederation against the Shishimak. But it was Tecumse who was trying to get everybody to try, but right? we're just talking Shikama. Or we're just talking Old Man, Toltec, or Shishimak. Or maybe we're just talking Western Shi, man, the Shishi. So the Olmec, you know, this is a matter of hot debate because if we're talking Olmec, we're talking Toltec, and we're talking Shishimek, but we're just talking Western Shi, we're talking about the land of the feathered serpent, we're talking Ebra, we're talking lost tribes and promised lands, the seed of Abraham. So we're talking Olmec, it's a matter of hot debate because these Olmecs are connected with all these other tribes and uh, Quetzalcoatls and uh, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands again. We're just talking Olmec. The mother culture, you know, such as the Maya, right? So the Shishimex, so Shishimex, we're talking Olmex, Olmex, Shishimex, right? To end the war, the Spanish adopted a purchase for peace program providing food, tools, livestock, and land to the Shishimekas. What does this sound like? You know, if you were on the last video, this sounds like a lot like the last thing we heard. Everybody is doing everything they can to try to, you know, get these Shishimekas, these Shan Yus, these tribes that aren't confused and, you know, they're, you know, Spanish are doing whatever they can because they can't stop the Shishimax. But, you know, basically, you know, end up purchase for peace, sending Spanish to teach them agriculture, and passively converting them to Catholicism. Passively converting them to Catholicism. The Spanish and Shishimeca eventually assimilated. So, unfortunately, it seems like, you know, these Spanish invaders who were linked up with Indian allies or were able to overwhelm the Shishimax. Shikamabwas, right? So, you know, they were passively converted to Catholicism. But we're talking, according to the Spanish, the Shishimek did not worship idols. Again, we're talking spiritual idolatry, man. I mean, it's deep. So, if they're talking about they converted them to Catholicism, but they didn't worship idols, I mean, what are we really talking about? So, is, is Catholicism considered idol worship to the Shishi Mecca, or are they saying the Shishi Mecca didn't worship idols, so it was easier for them to convert to Catholicism? That sounds like hijack. I'm gonna go with the latter, that the Shishi Mecca weren't with this Catholicism, but you know, when you're going against entire invading Spanish army and your own people, I'm sure. It's treacherous in the trenches. But let's not skip though. Shishi Mecca did not worship idols, as did many of the surrounding indigenous peoples. <laughs> what are we really talking about? Are we talking lost tribes? Are we talking Ebra or Heber or Eber? Are we talking lost tribes and promised lands? The sea of Abraham. Right? So we're talking Shishia, right? Shishia, Shishi Mecca, right? You know, we're just connecting the dots. You know, if this, you know, you want to get a little more clarity, I suggest you follow up with some of the previous videos. But we're talking Shishia, who are the Tangus. Shishia, who are the Tangus, who Genghis Khan intended to annihilate the entire Western Shia culture, but not. Only are the Western Shia, the Tangus, but now you have the Olmecs who are calling themselves the Shi, the same name they use when they are in China. Again, if you weren't on the last videos, you're probably like, what is going 
on here. This doesn't make any sense. So we got Shishia, who are the Tengu, who are the Omex. Okay, we're just talking Omex. Omex. Or Shishimex. Or maybe we're talking Toltecs, man. But we know they did not worship idols, man. But that's the name they used when they were in China. So the Tengu, who are the Shishia, the Tengu. You know, remember we talked about the Oriental trade in Asia and Prester John and Columbus in the beginning. And, you know. But now we're talking the Tengus on the Silk Road, or at least a location on the Silk Road. You know, but we know the Tengus are the Shishia. And they created their own writing system. Right? And it says they adopted Buddhism and this and that, but we're just talking about <laughs> Western Shia, who are the she she, who could possibly be the she could make she she mechas who did not worship idols. So we're not we're dodging the hijack all around. Again, we're just talking Oriental trade, we're talking Silk Road, we're talking Tangu, we're talking she Shia, right? The kingdom of Preston John. Asia or America or maybe China. We're just following the drinking gourd. So the Tangus, who are the Dong Xinyang, Tangus, who according to William of Rubra, were big swarthy men. Swarthy meaning of a dark color complexion or cast. Remember, we're talking copper colored races found here. Right? Are we talking America or are we talking Asia? Are we talking Prester John, but also King David. Again, I'm just trying to connect the dots. So Tangu, Shishia. So we know this Tangus are Swarthy, so that would mean these Shishia are Swarthy. Would that mean these Shishi Mechas are Swarthy too? Who did not worship idols as did many of the surrounding indigenous peoples? Or are we just talking Omex, the mother culture? Are we talking Maya, right? A matter of hot debate. I wonder why. We're just talking giant stone heads, the old X, right? Or the Swarthy Tangoons, right? Takumse, Shishi Max, the Shika Models. Again, we're just connecting the dots, man. I'm I'm just so excited to do this, man. It, I mean it's just starting to make sense, you know, the more you Look into this history, man. Wow. Sounds like this was hidden and, you know, you know well crafted, man. Well crafted. But, you know, when the time is right, you know, Hawaii is going to show us the way. Man. Again, we walk a fine line when we, you know, try to define. Because <laughs> definition is spiritual idolatry. And it's only by the dim spark of the light of Hawaii we're allowed to see clear. So, talking Genghis Khan right the Shia Genghis Khan remember Genghis Khan getting, Genghis Khan intended to annihilate the entire western Shia culture and we know the she Shia are the Swarthy Tangus and you know he undertook campaigns as far west as European Rus. I promised you we were going to get back to the Ruses here we go you know, we're, it's all starting to make sense it says that this Chinggis Khan died on a campaign against the Shishi. So that's what they're saying here. That the Swarthy Tangus ended up getting at Chinggis Khan eventually. He was intending to annihilate their entire culture. We're just talking she at the glow of the sunrise. Or maybe we're just talking dragons. So, again, we're talking Chinggis Khan. We're talking Shishi. Tangus, who are the Shia? We're talking Prester John, right? Who, you know, was it Prester John in Asia or was he in America? But he's associated with the Silk Road, and so are these Tangus and these Shishi. Again, we're just talking Prester John. El Preste Juan. You know, it says, you know, Nestorian Christianity flourished under the Karakata, you know. Which we know is the name for China, Karakata, the Black Katan, or Preston John, right? We're just talking medieval romances. Emperador de los Abyssinos, the 
dragon's face, the dragon's pace. Presser John, John the Elder, Presbyter John, El Preste Juan. Right? That sounds like the Spanish, right? <laughs> you name any man. El Preste Juan. Or we just talking Presser John. But also King David. Prester John, is he this Khan Khan, chief of the Black Katai? You know, we're just talking Prester John in the Kar Katai, right? Prester John in Asia, right? The Tangus, man, the Swarthy Tangus. Prester John, Asia, America. We're just connecting the dots. Just connecting the dots. So the Mongols under Chinggis Khan overthrew the Kar Katai, they said. But remember this Chinggis. Chingis, Yingis, Jingis, Temujin, Temujin. But we know he overthrew the Kara Katai, is what they're saying. But we know Khan Khan, chief of the Black Kataians, is most likely this Prester John, El Preste Wang. So again, Kara Katai, or Black Katan, or Preste Juan, right? Again, we're just talking Black Katan. Copper color races found here. I'm talking Preston John, but also King Day. So, again, this Arontius finds map is very interesting. We got Katai, we got Florida, we got Asia, right? Man? <laughs> we got Manj. We're just talking all under heaven. Right? Are we talking North America? I mean, you tell me, this doesn't make any sense. According to what they tell us, but all we're doing is connecting the dots between these Katai, these black Katans, you know, Khan Khan, or Wang Khan, or El Preste Wan, you know, just connecting the dots. So, you know, talking Toril Khan, associated with the legend of Prester John, but also King David, you know, so remember. Are we talking lost tribes and promised lands or the seed of Abraham? Right? Toril Khan, who is Toril Khan, is Khan Khan. Maybe it's his Prester John, Toril Khan, Wang Khan, right? The blood brother of the Mongol chief, Yesagai, and served as an important early patron and ally to Yesagai's son, Temushin, right? which only survives in an 18th century Russian translation. We're just talking Russes, right? It's going to all make sense. Trust me. Toril Khan, Ang Khan, Khan Khan, Wang Khan, Prester John, but also King David, the seed of Abraham. So it says, uh, we're talking Prester John. So this is from Prester John, the legends of its sources. So we're talking Marco Polo flow now. So if you, you know, might, you might have checked the Marco Polo out on Netflix. Huh? If you're interested in this information, I mean, it's at least worth watching. I mean, it's a lot of hijack, but it's worth it. But you know, Marco describes Chinggis Khan killing Prester Wan, right? And Prester John became associated with the Ethiopia, and then the legend began to unravel, right? But Marco Polo says that Prester John was actually an Asian monarch. An Asian monarch. I mean, we're talking Wang Khan. Are we talking Preston John? Right? Asian monarch. Asian monarch. We're talking Black Katan. Are we talking Khan Khan? Or maybe I'm just talking about Preston John. Let's go, man. Episode 5, man. Preston John. Actually, an Asian monarch. According to Marco Polo, at least. No, we'll at least take it for what it says. Again, it says so. This uh, Tartars, who we learned are the Mongols under this Temujin, this Genghis Khan, right? You know, they said they paid a tax to one great lord whose name was Unk Khan. Are we talking An Khan or Wang Khan? Maybe Preston Chen. I'm just talking about Preston Chen, the Asian Mongol, the Black Atai, Khan Khan. So these Mongols paid a tax to this Khan Khan. And Marco says, Prester John, of whose kingdom everyone speaks. We're talking kingdom of everyone speaks. We're talking King David? Are we talking Israel? Or are we talking America? Maybe we're just talking about Mexico and Moshe and the 
What else? What else are we talking about? Man? Come on, man. I can't make this up. Unc Khan, Press of John, the kingdom which everyone speaks. So, you know, we asked a question in past videos, what's the deal with Chinggis Khan and Prester John, and why is Chinggis Khan intending to annihilate the entire Western Shia culture? Here's where it all comes together. We're just talking 1200, right? 1200, right? 1200, right? <laughs> Toril Khan, or Wang Khan, or Prester John. 1200, you know, uh, says that Genghis Khan wanted to get, wanted Prester John to give him his daughter as a wife. So now it's, we're talking many romances, right? This is where, <laughs> where it gets sticky, man. And when the Prester, you know, heard this, he was greatly outraged. So the Prester's like, man, who is this Genghis Khan think he is, man? Asking my daughter as a wife? But we also got to ask the question, is he outraged because of that? Or is he outraged because it says Toriel Khan or Wang Khan or maybe Prester John is the blood brother of Temujin's father, Yesika? I'm just connecting the dots. Man. I don't know what the true story. This is according to Marco Polo. I'm just trying to make it make sense. I'm learning this just as you are learning as well. It seems that Prester was more upset or, you know, that he is my vassal and my servant. So if Genghis is a vassal and servant to this uh, Unk Khan, whose kingdom of everyone speaks, the great lord, the Asian monarch, the legend, the Prester John, the Wan Khan, right? But also King David, you know, we're just talking lost tribes and province lands, but the seed of Abraham. He's like, Chingus, you're supposed to be paying tribute to Israel, but you're, at, you're asking me for my daughter. Or you're trying to connect myself, yourself with, with my family, with my inheritance, or if they're um, uncle and nephew, I mean, maybe he just feels like, you know, you, you tell me, man. I don't know. I'm just connected. But basically, Prester's like, I'd rather have her burn. Burn, you know, I'd rather have my daughter burn than give her to him as a wife. Presser John's popping off on Jesus. He's not going. And I ought to put him to death if he acts like a traitor and a villain against his lord. You know, we're talking lost tribes and promised land. <laughs> the seed of Abraham. So, again, man, this is an interesting story nonetheless. So, it says Tan Duke, or are we talking Tan Goo? But it says that there were many villages and castles that belonged to the Grand Khan, right? The Grand Khan, which I would assume would be Khan Khan, right? Chief of the Black Italians, or Preston John, belonged to the Grand Khan. <laughs> the main city is called Tanduk, so we know the Tanduk I mean, sounds like Tangu to me, or the Shishi, who call themselves the, also the Olmecs. You know, but if the Olmecs are the Toltecs or the Shishi Mecs, and it's Quetzalcoatl, I mean, what is Quetzalcoatl and Preston John? And what, what, what is the other oh, connection? I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's interesting, man. We're just talking medieval romances, right? So it says, and the king of this province is of the same lineage as Preston John. So now just Marco Polo's got us all over the place. We don't know what's going on. So we're talking Preston John, but now we're saying that there's a king who's of the same lineage as Preston John, which from what we just read it would seem as if we're talking about Chinggis Khan who's the blood or who is the son of Yesagai who's the blood brother of Toriel Khan right who's associated with the legend of Preston John maybe we're just talking about George <laughs> right so basically you know they're saying that I tell you that the Grand Khans have always given their daughters and family members to the kings who reigned over the lineage of Preston John. So this is what Marco is telling us, that these Grand Khans always gave their daughters and family members to the Khans who reigned over the lineage of Preston John. But, you know, we, we're, we're, we're just taking this one step at a time. We might have to come back to this, but this is according to Marco Polo. 
it says that Genghis Khan, after defeating Toril Ang Khan, gave Toril's knees to his son Tolu. So the story here, like much of Marco Polo's text, is embellished. So remember, this is just Marco Polo's popping off. We don't really know what he's talking about. But he knows that he's considering this Prester John an Asian monarch, right? We're talking priest king, right? Priest king, presbyter John, right? Priest king was heard of in Asia. Later, it became generally accepted that his kingdom lay in Africa. We're talking Asia, but now we're talking Africa. Or maybe we're just talking... Amaru Khans, Amaru Khans, right? Or maybe we're just talking about Mexico, who we saw was connected to Asia, according to Orontius Fine's map. So, basically, you know, with the growth of knowledge and discovery of places in which Prester John was not to be found. So we got Marco Polo saying Prester John was killed by Chinggis Khan. And then at the same time, you got, uh, and basically saying they never found Prester John, so I don't, I don't know. But it says the location of the priest king moved to lesser known regions. Are we talking lost tribes and promised lands? The seed of Abraham? Are we talking America? Are we talking Qatar, chief of the black Qatayans? But the development of the legend makes a fascinating study. So a profound effect on the history of European ex exploration and discovery in Asia and Africa was due to that of Prester John, El Preste Juan, right? But, you know, also King David, we're just talking lost tribes and promised lands, the seed of Abraham, man, let's go, man. It's a lot of information, man, but we're just connecting the dots, man. Just connecting the dots. I'm just talking Chinggis Khan and Preston John. So, again, Chinggis Khan and Preston John. The emperor's face. The emperor's face. But remember, Batu Khan stabbed Prince Michael of Chernigov to death. A ruse. Remember, I told you I'd make the ruse connection. A ruse stabbed to death for refusal to do obeisance to Chinggis Khan's shrine in the pagan ritual. Note that Chinggis is depicted as a black man. So Batu Khan, uh, Chinggis's uh, people, stabbed this uh, Prince Michael of Chernigov, a ruse to death. For refusal to do obeisance to a pagan ritual, right? But you know, now we're just talking about Shan Yu, right? Shan Yu of the Shan Yu, right? But again, keep this in mind: a Russian prince, Genghis Khan, Preste Wan, Emperor de los Abyssinos. So let's connect the dots. Remember, on our previous video, we talked about Shan Yu and the connection with Shan Yu to these folk tales in King Arthur, right? But we're just talking the legend of Prester John, right? The legend of Prester John who had a profound effect, profound effect on the history of European exploration. Okay. Prester Juan. So Sean Yu, or Son of Heaven, again, this is where the history and the timelines all start to blend together. But remember, Sean Yu, Son of Heaven, again, we're talking Lost tribes and promised lands, the seed of Abraham, Sean Yu, and keep this Manchuria in your mind. But we learned that the Great Wall did not stop you, the Sean Yu, the Son of Heaven. The Great Wall did not stop the Sean Yu, the Son of Heaven. So, you know, it says that they married leaders to Chinese princesses. This sounds a lot like what Genghis Khan was on, man, but whatever they tried to do, they couldn't stop you, you know, Sean Yu, you know, Sean Yu of the Sean Yu. So remember in the last video we talked about the Han and Sean Yu and their beef over China or Karkatai and the connection between the Sean Yu Empire and the Black Katai. You know, is Sean Yu Prester John or is Sean Yu just Sean Yu of the Sean Yu? But, you know, we're just connecting the dots. But Sean Yu had a beef with this Lu Bang, who repeatedly, repeatedly declined Sean Yu's offers to settle their conflict in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So Sean Yu was popping off like, man, I don't know what, what you on, Lu Bang, but this my, this my Katai, man, this my, this my land, let's go, like, 
hand in hand, you know. But Lu Bang wasn't trying to hear none of that. They saying that Shan Yu's forces were eventually overwhelmed and he chose suicide rather than capture, so this Shan Yu is just popping off. We're just talking Shan Yu, we're just talking Son of Heaven. But we know that they didn't ever find Prester John. But is Prester John affiliated with this Shan Yu? We're just talking El Preste Juan, but also King David, the seed of Abraham, right? We're just talking Katai, the black Katai, the car Katai. Under Prester John, who was affiliated with Asia, remember, was known in medieval Europe. So this is where Europe and these medieval romances and this Katai and this Prester John all start to connect in these ruses, right? So these Katan, we know the black Katan, and we learn that this um, Genghis Khan, you know, began referring to North China as Katai and South China as Manji. Katai is still a Russian word for China. I mean, we're just talking Russes, right? We're just talking Prince Michael of Chernigov, who was stabbed to death for refusal to do obeisance to Genghis Khan's ritual, right? But how is this Russes connected with medieval Europe and the Katai and Preston John? Let's go. So we know Katai, you know, names of China, Celestial Empire, all under heaven. T and Shia, like the Shi Shi. Who are the Swarthy Tangus? Who are the Shishi Mac? Who are maybe the Shikamagus, right? Or maybe the Shan Yus, right? We're talking about Son of Heaven, right? All under heaven, right? Shan Yu, right? Or are we just talking Chinggis Khan and Preston John, right? Hawashi, right? So the Katans, you know, maintain their old customs, old customs, right? We're talking. Lost tribes and promised lands, <laughs> or the seeds of Abraham. Right? So it says that these non Chinese and Han Chinese empires gain prestige by connecting themselves with China. This sounds like hijack, hijack city. We ain't talking about connecting ourselves with no China. We are so called China, right? Or the Katan, I should say. You know, Katai, the Kara Katai, right? And the Khan Khan, the Wang Khan, the Shi Shia. The Tangus, right? Chief of the Black Katans, right? So, says the title of Chinese emperor was also called the Khan of Chin, right? We're just, or Shin, right? Are we talking Shi Shi or are we talking Tangus? Maybe we're just talking dragons, right? Emperor's Pace, Emperor's Feast. So, okay, Marco Polo put the image of Katai before the European public. So that Europe didn't even know nothing about Katai, what was really popping off till Polo came home and told him about it 50 years later, right? So, you know, he, you know, was, you know, if you watch the show, you know, he was in the court of, they say, this Kublai Khan, you know, one of the grandsons of Genghis Khan. But Europe had no, had no idea what was going on in Katai. Had no idea. We're just talking Monkey, the brother of Kublai. Mangi, also spelled Mangu. Again, we haven't talked about Mangi to this point, but you know, I feel like now is the time to point it out. Remember, Mangi, Mangi. Right? So here's where it all comes together. We're talking Columbus, we're talking Marco Polo, and the New World, right? So they say Columbus ended up in America. He was or in China. He was trying to find America or whatever, but we know what the, what the truth sounds like. Marco Polo told it what was going on. Somehow the Spanish linked up with these Italians and now, you know, they're going to the new world, right? They're just trying to reach Manji, right? The Katai, right? They're trying to find Prester John, I'm assume, but remember, he was not to be found. So the Europeans thought of Katai as a completely separate and distinct culture from China. But we know China, its real name is Katai, the Celestial Empire, all under heaven, the Kar Katai, the Black Katan, the Shi Shia, and the Tangus, right? We just know that from the research. But these Europeans had no clue. It became a poetic name for China, Katai. Just a poetic name, right? So let's get to these maps so I can make the connections. You know, we like the Carter Marina, man. It's been one of our favorites. 
So again, I'm just talking Genghis Khan and Prester John. Ah, let's go. Again, Carter Marina. This map is found in the uh, Library of Congress, is what they say. Let's get some orientation. We're talking Florida, so we know we're talking America. Right, Mexico, right? China. Manji, right? We're talking Manji, right? And Tangu and Katai, right? India Superior. So we're talking Indians or India Superior or Preston China, but also King Tang. Let's go, man. Again, we're talking Manji, we're talking Florida, we're talking Mexico, we're talking Tangu. I always like to point out, you know, it seems like they got everything else figured out. Why is it that? This doesn't make sense to us. What's really going on here with this situation? You tell me. Leave a note in the comments. Let's go. Just talking Carter Marina. Ovo to vote. Okay. Talking Manji. All right. We're talking Florida. We're talking Tangu. How is this all connected, man? Are we talking Lost Tribe in the Promised Lands? Or are we talking the Seed of Abraham? Let's go, man. Let me know what you think. We're almost to the end. Let's go. So, again, we got another map, right? We got this one here. I'm talking about uh, this whole American connected to what we would know to be Russia or you know, Asia, right? So, what's the deal with that? Right? What's the deal with this here? Is it say American? Are we just talking Khans, right? We're talking Mongolia. Are we talking Russes, man? Are we talking Russia? Are we talking Americans? I mean, what's really going on, man? This says state of nations. State of nations at the Christian era, right? We're just talking Ebra, right? Heber, Ebra, all under heaven, right? We're talking Hebrew. We're talking. Land of the Feathered Serpent, right? Talking T and Shia, right? So the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Just, you know, give you some uh, orientation before we get to the end, right? Last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. We're talking the Tau. Your mark. The fulfillment of the entire revealed word of Wow. The Tau. Your mark. You know, this is a little Ezekiel talking about you know, sealed with the mark of the Tau. Wash chosen people until the end of their lives who remain faithful were called the remnant of Israel, often the poor and simple people who trusted in Hawaii, even without understanding. We're just talking, you know, walking that fine line we've been talking about, you know, because definition is spiritual idolatry. So, again, you know, if it weren't for the dim spark of the hidden light, we are allowed to. See the dragon's paces and the dragon's face. This would engender heresy. So, all praises to the Most High for allowing us to connect the dots. Okay, we're talking El Preste Juan, right? Medieval romances, right? We're talking King Arthur, Arthur Pendragon, right? <laughs> so, this is where, you know, we just talked about. This is where the whole Europe and Russia come into play. But we're just talking all under heaven, right? We're talking America, right? So again, again, we're just talking the legend of the Preston John. Or we're just talking the legend of the King Arthur. Arthur Pen Dragon, right? The dragon's face. The dragon's face. So again, Batu Khan stabbed Prince Michael of Chernigov or Rus to death for refusal to do obeisance to Genghis Khan in the pagan ritual. No Chinggis is depicted as a black man. Again, we're just talking ruses, right? Or are we just talking medieval romances? So Batu Khan, also known as Sar Batu, Batu Khan, in Russian histori- historiography, was a Mongol ruler and founder of the Golden Horde. 
a constituent of the Mongol Empire. Batu was the son of Joshi, thus a grandson of Genghis Khan. His Ulus ruled over the Kievan Rus, so his empire ruled over these Ruses, right? But remember that we're just talking Americans, right? We're talking this would be Russia, right? Right? I mean, you tell me. Er, I mean, maybe I'm off. This is just the state of nations uh, at the Christian era. This is what they say. I'm just talking about the lost tribes and promised lands, the seed of Abraham all under heaven so now we have the connection knowing that these Mongol Khans pretty much are affiliated and associated with these black Khans right you know this seems as if this could all be fam right but we know Batu Khan stabbed Prince Michael of Chernikov to death a ruse for his refusal to do you know obeisance to a pagan ritual so here's where it all comes together right I'm just talking Andrus right the Andrus right Andrus or Andro or the Rus, right? I'm just talking Ruses, right? You're looking like, what's going on, man? I mean, I'm just talking Tao, right? I'm just talking the mark, the sign, the covenant, right? But I'm just talking, <laughs> right? I'm just talking Andrus, right? Rus, Rus people, the people of Rus, Kievan Rus, a medieval East Slavic state, Rus, Kaganat. Cognate, right? We're just talking Ruses, right? Ratu Khan, grandson of Genghis Khan, ruled over the Ruses at this point, right? But seems that these Ruses wasn't down with pagan rituals nonetheless, which you know, makes us be reminded of these uh, Shishi Meccas who uh, did not worship idols either, right? But we're just talking Prester John, but also King just talking medieval romances. Come on, let's go. We're just talking Ruses, right? We're just talking Ruses, right? Ancient people who gave their name to the lands of Russia and Belarus. Ancient people, I mean, if we're talking ancient people, I mean, are we talking lost tribes and promised lands, the seed of Abraham, or are we just talking about America, right? Their origin and identity are in much dispute, but of course, it's in dispute. Just talking Sean Yu's of the Sean Yu. Yeah. We're talking Ruses. We're talking Taos, man. We're talking Taos, man. One more time for the, before we get out of here. We're talking Tao, man. The last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Fulfillment of the entire world revealed word of Hawaii. The seal. Hawaii's chosen people. The remnant of Israel. Right? We trusted in Hawaii, even without understanding. But we know. That these Ruses are connected with Prester John, but also King David. They're connected with the Khans. They're connected with the Karakatai. They're connected with these medieval romances. They're connected with this Arthur Pendragon. Right? Kievan Rus, right? We're just talking Ruses. We're talking the Mark, though. We gotta ask ourselves why and what is really going on. I appreciate everybody rocking with me on this one. I was just uh, trying to connect the dots, man. you know. I'm just talking dragons, right? We're just ascending the mountain, right? But again, you know, what's important here is that, you know, Hawa is giving us you know, clarity. It is only by the dim spark of the hidden light that we are allowed to see. Man. So, again, as we get out of here, remember, you know, we're just climbing the mountain, man. I never said it was gonna be easy, but you know, it'll be worth it, man. So again, Allah, you know, may we all see clearly. This is another episode of Dragons in America. Let's go.